This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For those of you who are participating online and those who are here in person, it is always so good to gather with you on Sunday morning to worship and to praise. For those who are at home, it might not be Sunday morning when you participate. And so we just want to welcome, welcome everyone. I'm Dawn Hauser. I'm the pastor here at Aiken United Methodist Church. Today we are going to explore, of all things in this week, the wrath of God and grace that is offered through Jesus Christ. God has been angry with the Hebrew children, but since ever since the beginning of time, there's been a connection to the Hebrew children, and God has also rescued the Hebrew children, the Hebrew, Hebrew people, and ultimately, God has rescued all of humanity. This same grace, love, and acceptance is offered to all humankind. Please stand in body or spirit and sing with me, if you would, number 130 in the United Methodist Hymnal, We Gather Together. remain standing in body or spirit as we transition to our call to worship. I will read the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded words. Israel's sin of idolatry with the golden calf was a real test of God's mercy. We are amazed when we read of God's patience with Israel during their journey to the promised land. His mercy with us is no less marvelous when we think of how we try his patience with our sinning. We thank God for Jesus who intercedes on our behalf, bringing us mercy that is greater than our sins. I invite you to enter into a posture of prayer with me as we offer our opening prayer. You will find the words are written in your bulletin as well as on the screen. Let's pray together. O oh, loving God, whose mercy far exceeds the limits of any love you owe to us, withhold your anger which we deserve, that we may experience forgiveness through your Son, Jesus our Savior, who intercedes on our behalf. In his name we pray, amen. Well, I invite you to remain standing in body or spirit, and if you would sing with me number 140 from the United Methodist Hymnal, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please be seated. I'd like to invite Jeff to come and to share our scripture for today. Good morning. Our scripture reading is Exodus 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people realized that Moses was taking forever in coming down off the mountain, they rallied around Aaron and said, Do something. Make gods for us who will lead us. That Moses, the man who got us out of Egypt, who knows what happened to him? So Aaron told them, take off the gold rings from the ears of your wives and sons and daughters and bring them to me. They all did it. They removed the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from their hands and cast it in the form of a calf, shaping it with an engraving tool. The people responded with enthusiasm. These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up from Egypt. Aaron Taking in, taking in the situation, built an altar before the calf. Aaron then announced, tomorrow is a feast day to God. Early the next morning, the people got up and offered whole burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. The people sat down to eat and drink and then began to party. It turned into a wild party. God spoke to Moses, go, get down there. Your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have fallen in pieces. In no time at all, they've turned away from the way I commanded them. They've made a molten calf and worshipped it. They've sacrificed to it and said, These are the gods, O Israel, that brought you up from the land of Egypt. God said to Moses, I look at this people. Oh, what a stubborn, hard-headed people. Let me alone now give my anger free reign to burst into flames and incinerate them. But I'll make a great nation out of you. Moses tried to calm his God down. He said, why, God, would you lose your temper with your people? Why, you brought them out of Egypt in a tremendous demonstration of power and strength. Why, you let the Egyptians say he had it in for them. He brought them out so he could kill them in the mountains, wipe them right off the face of the earth. Stop your anger. Think twice about bringing evil against your people. Think of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you gave your word, telling them, I will give you many children, as many as the stars in the sky, and I'll give you, and I'll give you this land to your children as their land forever. And God did think twice. He decided not to do evil. He had threatened against his people. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's a lot taller than I am, right? So, oh, how interesting is it that the lectionary scripture for this Sunday comes on the heels of everything that is happening in Israel and in Gaza right now. It, it is sometimes these moments that I think are God winks. And this passage of scripture is a reminder to us about God's chosen people, the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jewish people. They were God's chosen people. God brought them out of the land of Egypt. And to set this story up a little bit, Moses led these people into the wilderness, away from captivity and away from slavery in the Egyptian world. And so here they find themselves wandering in the wilderness. And God had showed these miraculous and powerful um, instances of parting the, the Red Sea so that the people could move forward. I mean, there were so many different things. And so here they are, they find themselves in the wilderness, and Moses has gone up into the mountain to 
visit with God. And while he's up there visiting with God, well, these people get to be a little bit restless. And they think to themselves, he's never coming back. He brought us out here and just left us here. So now we need to figure out and find a God that is going to lead us. Because Moses isn't coming back with his God. I, when I think about this story, I think about the fact that these people had not completely bought into the fact that this was the God of the universe. That this was the God. Not all their little graven images that they carried around and their little whatever, their lucky rabbit foot or whatever it might have been. This was the God, and they hadn't quite figured that out yet. I love that it's not in this version, but in another version, the people are referred to as stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people. And then I think to myself, oh my gosh, they're describing us. <laughs> because we sometimes are a stiff-necked people. And so these people, they take all of their gold and they give it to Aaron. And Aaron, this is amazing to me. I, I've been watching a lot lately, these videos that pop up that show how people are using acrylics in molds to make things. It's like, what? Aaron had a mold of a calf that he could pour all this molten gold into? Come on. They're in the middle of nowhere. But they manage, he manages to create the golden calf. And these people are worshiping this golden calf. Now, to us, looking back on this story, we think, what the heck is wrong with these people? It's a big chunk of gold. What did they think was gonna, it was going to do for them? But this became their God. And while they were doing all of this, God says to Moses, you better get your fanny down there because these people have completely lost their minds. They have not heard one thing that I've said to them. A matter of fact, I'm so angry with them, I'm just going to wipe them off the planet and be done with it because, you know, they don't listen anyway. And so Moses pleads. Moses pleads with God for their safety and for their lives. Now I think about the world that we're living in today, and I've given a lot of thought to all of the warring that is happening in our world right now, whether it's Ukraine or Israel or Gaza, and the innocent people that are dying over silliness. It truly is silliness. It's about greed. It's about power. It's about so many different things, and people are dying for that. Instead of the golden calf being worshipped, what's being worshipped today is money and power and greed. And innocent people are dying because of it. And I think to myself, we better watch out because God has the ability to wipe every one of us off the planet and say, enough. I created these people, and look at what they've turned into. As a mother, I remember raising a son by myself who had lots of stuff going on. He was ADHD. He just... A difficult child, we'll just put it that way. He didn't get into trouble with the law or anything like that, but he just was a difficult, difficult child. And I remember having to give myself a time out so that I didn't strangle this child. There were days. There still are, Danny says. That's because it's her baby brother, right? <laughs> But there were times where I just had to give myself a time out. And I think that when we read this story, Moses was really asking God, take a time out. Don't kill them. Because you could, there could be 
horrible, horrible ramifications later down the road. What is the message that you're sending to Egypt? That you just led them out into the wilderness so that you could murder them all? That's the message that would be sent. And so God made space to offer grace. To offer grace. And I look at the world around us, our own community, the people in our community, the state. I think about the many horrific things that have happened in the last few years, and I think, oh, God must be so angry with us. And yet, we're still here. There is this enormous amount of grace that is poured over all of humanity. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've heard a lot of uh, interviews with Jewish people this last week, and people are all over the board with the stuff that is happening as far as their feelings. Many, and rightfully so, are outraged that their country was invaded and people were murdered and brutalized senselessly. And so they are outraged. There are many who are concerned about the innocent people who are in Palestine, who have absolutely nothing to do with a terrorist group, but they're innocent. Do you know that almost 50% of the, ch of the people who live in Palestine, who live in Gaza, are under the age of 14 years old? There are many people who are outraged that many lives are going to be lost and a lot of them will be children. It's a sad state that we're in, but I listen to these people and I listen intently. And for many of them, their faith is an important part of how they are coping with what is happening all around them. Their deep faith in knowing that God is with them in knowing that they are resilient people who have been through so much since time immoral, their faith is what is keeping it together for so many. For many of us, we've experienced all kinds of hardships and loss in our own lives. And oftentimes when we get through the grief and the heartache and the pain and we turn and look back, what we realize is that it was our faith that helped us to keep it together. We are rooted in our faith. We are rooted in the promise that God will not destroy us because we screw up, right? We're human beings. We make mistakes. We do dumb stuff. The younger we are, sometimes the dumber the stuff. And, and who knows? We just do dumb stuff. And yet, there is this God of love and acceptance that says, I'm going to pour grace upon grace upon grace out over you. I'm not saying your mistakes are okay, I'm just saying to you that I will forgive you and I won't wipe you off the planet. Mistakes are mistakes and grace is so important. Not only does God offer this grace through Jesus Christ, but then God pours that grace into each and every one of us and says, go out into the world and be a peacemaker. Go out into the world and pour grace out. Pour that grace out onto other people. You are a vessel of grace. If you haven't experienced the grace and the love of Jesus Christ, it isn't very hard. It's not hard to experience it. All you have to do is turn to God and say, I honor you. I know who you are. I know that you are my creator, and I know that you became human in the form of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, you brought grace and love to humanity. It is so simple, and yet it is so difficult sometimes too, isn't it? Sometimes we just grow into that faith and that grace. 
and other times we have pivotal moments in our lives that we turn to God and say, yes, I belong to you. Grace. I do want to address some of what is happening in our world with our Jewish neighbors and our Palestinian neighbors. It is unbelievable to me that there are people in our world that do not believe that we can hold multiple ideas and thoughts in tension with one another. We can have empathy for the Palestinian people. We can have empathy for them. We can say that it is wrong, completely wrong, for Hamas or any other terrorist group to attack any nation, including Israel. It is wrong. At the same time, we can hold in tension our Jewish brothers and sisters, and we can empathize knowing that what happened last weekend was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. What we cannot do, what we cannot do is say revenge is okay. Revenge is never okay. Revenge belongs to the creator, not to us. There will be answers, if not in this lifetime, in the next. But we can have empathy and we can hold our Jewish brothers and sisters close and in prayer, knowing that what has happened has been horrendous. We can care about what's happening in our own country, that we're on high alert. I received emails from the Department of Homeland Security saying, be careful. Make sure that you have a security plan in place. We can have empathy for our own citizens and what they're going through. These are hard times. And we have to begin to learn to live differently and be alert and be aware. We can hold multiple opinions and thoughts in tension with one another. At the root of everything is humanity. At the root of it all, we're all human beings, regardless of the color of our skin, the texture of our hair, where we were born, where we were not born. At the root of it all, none of it matters, except that we're human beings created in the image of God. And it doesn't matter where we currently live or don't live. We're all human. And this grace, this grace and these promises that God has made, that we read in scripture, those, that grace and those promises, they're offered to every single one of us. And we remember that. And we remember that we're not going to be on this earth forever. But there's something that comes after. And the something that comes after is sweeter than we will ever experience here. And we remember that because it's promised. Many of these promises of God I've experienced in my own life, and I'm sure many of you have too. And so we have faith. We have faith that the God of the universe is with us in the good and in the bad. Amen.
That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing this morning. Well, each week we set aside this time to offer prayers for our family, our friends, our neighbors, the community, and for the world who are in need. I invite you to respond with the words, hear our prayer, when you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy. Let's pray together. Gracious God, may your grace continue to overflow for all your people with the love of Jesus Christ. May our intercessions rise before you like incense, like the prayers of the saints in heaven, along with the perfect prayers of our advocate with you, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Lord, in your mercy, with him we pray that your kingdom may come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Strengthen your whole church to serve you faithfully in the world. May the obedience of your people in Christ, members of his body, serve to call others to obedience and membership in the church. May your people continue to heed the word of Jesus to cure the sick and to say that to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. As a mother comforts her child, so may your healing spirit bring calm to those who are disturbed and direction to those who are lost. Strengthen those who have lived indulgently to take up the cross and follow Christ in the selfless service of others. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all who care for the sick in homes, hospitals, nursing homes, and hospices. Send them not only cures for the body, but balm for the soul. New physical wholeness and more mature spiritual life. We especially pray for those who we now hold in the silences of our hearts. We pray for those who are being ripped apart by war, those who are in fear of their own lives, no matter where they live. 
We pray for those who are in powerful positions that they would use diplomatic tools to resolve differences, that weapons would be laid down, and that people would live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, eternal God, we rejoice in the faith that you have received out of our sight, and not only your son Jesus in his ascension, but also many of our comrades in the way of the cross. Keep us faithful and true to you all the days of our journey, that we may arrive at last at your heavenly house in peace and ready for the rest you have prepared for your weary pilgrims. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit is worthy of all glory and honor, time without end. Amen. So now we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, each week we take time during our worship service to offer ourselves, our time, our talent, and our gifts back to God. It is through these gifts that we, the church, are able to offer the good news of Jesus Christ to our neighbors. For those of you who are participating online, you will find all of the information for online giving is located in the description of this video. And for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, you will find some wonderful, beautiful wooden boxes in the back of the sanctuary where you're invited to leave your offerings. Someone will care for them after the service. Please stand in body or spirit and sing with me number 94, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Let us pray and ask God to bless the gifts we have received. As we stand in your house, O God, we present these tokens of our servanthood. We would serve you both in worship and in the cause of human justice with Jesus Christ, who practices what he preaches. Use us and our gifts to grow your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the Christ we pray, amen. So we're going to do a little bit of a change in our last song. We were going to sing, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. And I think we're going to pull out our hymnals. We're going to dust them off. And we're going to sing number 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
do we ever need peace, don't we? World peace, for sure. But for many of us, we need peace within ourselves. And peace truly does begin with each of us. May you be confident in knowing the grace and the love of God in all that you do. Go out into the world and share God's grace, love, and peace with the people in your world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with the world. Amen. Amen.